Hi everyone and welcome. Uh, if you're a regular on my channel, you'll know that I'm a kind of a, a fan of keeping information organized in spreadsheets. So most of the time we're visiting in on my main tracking spreadsheet that keeps track of all my regular composting bins. And, but in this one case, I was, um, was going to create a series of videos to focus on just one bin so we can really concentrate on uh, everything about that one bin. And for 110 days now, actually 120, it's been 120 days since we populated this bin with worms. So for past 120 days, and then some, I've been keeping track of a lot more information um, just about this one bin than I normally do. And I've even got a portion of the spreadsheet here set up to graph that information where, you know, blue, for example, indicates the moisture in the bin and the red is indicating the food levels as far as I'm perceiving them each time I either go in there to either feed the bin or to simply check in on it. So past couple times we've checked in on this bin, we've um we've only been checking in we were we were not feeding because back on day 100 we had decided it was time to um, start steering the bin towards migration so we can get the worms out harvest the castings because it was so far along already it seemed sensible to go down that route at this point so the last time we checked in 10 days ago we had already um, started to get the sense that the food was getting depleted pretty good. There were some leftovers still, and those were sort of reorganized, if I remember correctly, into a single spot to make sure that the worms can continue to feed on it and break it all down. But the next natural step for a bin that we've been withholding food from and trying to get them to break everything down is to try to migrate the worms out of that material. Um, so today's check-in is really to get an overall sense of how things look so I try to collect different types of metrics about the bin relative to um, a 1 to 5 rating scale so I'm you know tracking elements such as what I perceive to be the the moisture or the food levels or even the apparent amount of grit in the bin so it's just a bunch of um, little data points that I was thinking I might be able to keep track of and um, and visualize better on a graph. I'm not sure how much it helps and if it had been really like earth shattering, awesome, uh, useful tool, I probably would have introduced it by now. <laughs> but um, uh, it's totally new. I'm just experimenting. And uh, the, only other thing, the only other thing that I'm kind of um, conceptualizing here is something to help us feel like we've transitioned from what from this point forward would have always been the feeding and the tapering off of the feeding but then the next major milestone which is the activity of trying to move the worms out of the material which can be done any any one of a number of different ways and if one of the methods we choose is to migrate them then that would require um, sort of rebuilding the structure of the bin and if we get to that stage today based on what we see then um, then we will sort of be in that next stage of really trying to depopulate the bin. So before checking in on the bin, I thought we'd give a little intro to this spreadsheet I've been maintaining. Um, some of you out there will definitely love it. Um, some people have, some people will probably just be looking at this like, oh my goodness, OCD <laughs> in a major way. Um, but no, it's just it's just interesting because there's no formal tools that I've come across so far to help you sort of track your bins and um, help think, help yourself think of it in a real simple um, fashion. So, I thought if some somehow we can come up with some sort of um, easy tracking methods, it would be that much less intimidating for new new people to try adopting the uh, the practice of composting at home using worms. So, all right, enough chit chat. Let's get down to that bin and see how it's doing. It's funny. The other day, somebody in one of the the worm farming. Facebook groups made mention of my channel. Somebody had asked about worm channels and when they talked about my channel they talked about how I carve out the cardboard to fit perfectly over the container and I got a feeling they were talking about this container because I think this is the only bin where that where I've got such a precisely cut top <laughs> but it made me laugh when I got this bin out on the bench I said this is the bin that that person was talking about so all right, let's get this thing uncovered here and see what we got top layer is our water retention layer, plastic layer. I opted for a piece of bubble wrap, but in all my other bins I use simply a uh, 
folded up piece of plastic. I, uh, I think in most cases I'm just using an old shopping bag so it doesn't have to be bubble wrap. This piece of paper was placed on here new last time we checked in, which was 10 days ago. And uh, at that time we had already anticipated that this bin would be soaking wet. And whenever you've got a piece of um, anything that's soaking wet in the bin, the worms are going to be attracted to it. So you can see a couple worms have come out to take advantage of the moisture that had collected on top of this Oop. piece of paper. Sorry, buddy. Just going to move you guys aside so we can remove this paper. Get it over there. Yeah, with the camera closer like this, we definitely get a better view. So just to refresh our memory, what are we after here? What we're after here is um, getting the sense that the worms have done a, a fairly complete job on breaking down not only the food that they've been given, but also the bedding that they've been given. And if we feel that they're pretty close to that, then we, um, then we start setting up a fresh space for them to be drawn to a, a space where there's all fresh bedding, fresh food, and if the old space that they occupy is truly depleted of all of those things, then it'll be natural for them to want to um, gravitate towards a section of the bin where there's fresh bedding, fresh food, fresh everything else. So most of what I'm finding as I sort of stir up the the feeding zone area is, I believe most of it is chunks of bedding, although some of it feels a little bit soft. Makes me wonder if I might have hit a piece of banana peel or something. So I guess it's a combination of um, leftover chunks of food and bedding. And you know, when bedding has been sitting underneath food for a while like this, I start to consider it more as food because it's, you know, soaked with the juices of the food and all the goodness of the food. So. While it's basically a carbon material, I, um, I think it's a little bit more tempting to the worms than just your basic piece of dry paper or leaf. It's, um, it's all that, but then also the little bit of um, extra stuff that comes from the, the food dripping its goodness onto it. So I've already plucked out a couple good size food items here, banana peels. I actually think that one of them was still in its wrapper because for a while there we were feeding this bin in sort of a, uh, a pattern where every time the bin got fed it was fed a different spot and during that time we had placed all of the foods into little wrappers and placed that into the bin just a little bit of a just a little bit of a bedding wrapper for each portion of food that was given to the bin um, just to help with maintaining the right level of carbon mix between the food and the carbon. Um, sometimes I think you really even need more carbon, more bedding material than food. Because ultimately it too becomes food. Um, but it also doubles as the, the carbon source. Because most of the food you're giving them out of the kitchen, that's very nitrogen rich stuff. So they need a little bit of carbon to balance that out. So now that we've more or less um, upturned the entire feeding zone area, we've found at least two or three banana peels, still recognizable as such, just from their shape and the way they move when you grab them. Um, you can feel it too. Good amount of remaining bedding in here too, a whole bunch of cardboard stuff. So this feeding zone, while it was clear that it had sort of recessed a little bit, since the last time we were in here, it still seems like it's quite um, adequately um, stocked up with food to go for quite some time still. So I think it might still be early to try to initiate any sort of migration for these worms. The material out here is what we would consider as finished compost already. Um, then maybe we should just try to accelerate those next steps. However, Right away, I could see this would be the remains of a banana peel stem um, quite far along, because by the time it gets this small, it's it's down to maybe, you know, a tiny fraction of its original diameter, uh, you know, 
compared to one that's hardly been broken down at all. That's what it'll look like after, you know, a good six, eight weeks in the worm bin. And then other things I'm seeing in here within this material is a fair number of um, leaf stems. You know, the leafy portions of the, the leaf get gobbled up one, two, three, the thin, um, the thin green sections. But all the little sticks of each leaf generally take a little bit longer. And I usually use this as a, a pretty good indicator of how far along one of my worm bins is coming. So even though this would look to most people like a fairly mature package of vermicompost, and it certainly does because it's almost all vermicompost at this point, you also have to recognize the fact that it's littered with tiny little fragments of stuff that the worms can continue to feast on. So as far as the material is concerned as well, I'm thinking that uh, definitely needs a little bit more time to go. Maybe not much more time, but still, but more time is needed nonetheless. So my only idea on initiating horizontal migration in this bin, uh, if we had felt like it was at that point that we would want to do that, my idea was potentially to just relocate what remains in this center feeding zone and use that as the basis for setting up our new, um, new feeding zone on one or the other edge to get the worms over. So if we get to some point where the finished compost material, but we'll probably hang on to really see that sort of progress. I don't want to jump the gun. I don't want to have a bunch of compost that has little sticks and stuff in it. I'm not looking for a type of vermicompost that's going to win the county fair, but I'd still like to establish certain minimums, you know, one minimum being that I don't want to still have that much organic material remaining in it throughout. So I think I will use the um, depletion of all these little leaf sticks leaf stems as my indicator that we're more or less done. Here's a stem of something, the end of some piece of vegetable, little bits and pieces of its fiber. So this is a good thing to do too. I like to try to pull out larger chunks of food so I can better manage and better know where all the large chunks of food within the bin are. This way I've got a sense that I know all of the larger chunks of food that are still within the bin are in a particular spot and that the rest of the material is really just sort of littered with bits and pieces of bedding and food scraps so I think for now we're gonna let things go um, it's at this time I'm trying to also get a sense of how things are progressing so that I could track them in my spreadsheet. So I'm gonna do that out loud now. Usually I've just done that retroactively, revisiting the video that I publish about this bin's status and then try to gauge the status of those different aspects of the food and the moisture and the grit. Um, but we'll do it now. I think the moisture, as I've been indicating in that spreadsheet for some time now, is um, quite nice maybe even a little bit above the average. And I think that that's a good way to keep it for the time being. In order to keep the worms cruising comfortably throughout the material, including across the top surface, we want to maintain a pretty um, damp environment all around. And it's for that reason, I'm gonna keep the plastic covering, the bubble wrap in our case here in this bin, covering the almost the entire uh, surface of the bin but at some point we might switch to a smaller piece of plastic once we want the rest of the material on the outskirts to air out and only the feeding zone to remain nice and damp so as um, to use that aspect of the bin as a lure as well to get the worms um, out of the materials that, that's airing out and drying out and over into the area where we've got sort of the terrarium effect in place recirculating the moisture within the bin to make it nice and cozy over there. All right. Otherwise, we're just going to restore it to the way we found it. Um, the feeding zone in the middle will continue as is. And um, I guess maybe I'll just notch the rating on the food down by about a half a point on the graph. I've not added grit. And the grit numbers, from what I can tell, are a little bit low. 
And I'm glad I'm talking about this because that was the one aspect of it that I thought might benefit um, keeping this whole process moving at a good clip. So let's just hit the rewind button here really quick to do one thing that I had thought about doing and had almost forgotten. I'm glad we're talking about it now because now we'll get to do it is to just give this bin a quick injection of grit. It's not really food in my book. It's, it's, um, it's the material that the worms need to eat their food. And if the bin is now, in fact, running low, I would hate for that to be the reason that the um, consumption of the food um, slows down. So let's throw some grit in here. I'm using pulverized eggshell as grit, as most of you know if you've watched my channel. And when we refer to grit in the context of worm farming, it's, um, if you've ever heard of how a bird's stomach works using a gizzard, birds require little stones, little pebbles. Chickens will pick up little pebbles while they're picking up their food off the ground to, um, to help their gizzard break down the food that they're eating. So instead of a whole bunch of acid bath in their stomach, they've got little stones that the muscles grind around to help break up the food, and worms have a very similar setup. They have a gizzard, which requires um, hard, coarse materials in it to uh, help with the breakdown of the food that they're trying to consume. So that's the function of the, the grit here, and I just want to make sure we're not getting to a, uh, a low point on the grit level, because that would, in turn, I think, slow down the consumption of the food. All right, I'm going to try to pick the cleaner of the two sides, which I think is this side. And we're going to restore the plastic to covering almost the entire surface of the bin. And it's this plastic that really provides the, the perfect cover um, within the bin to help the moisture level stay as cozy as it is. Um, I got a feeling that the worms really enjoy this material all the way out to the edges where the moisture is. Uh, almost consistent throughout the bin, so it's pretty nice. Maybe a little bit more damp where the feedings are occurring, but um, not by much, that's for sure. Okay, so at day 120, I think we're well on our way to having a bin that's almost ready to have the worms migrated out of it. They've still got to finish their supply of food. They've still got to break down what's in the um, compost, or the little fragments of bedding and uh, uh, food items um, and then at some point we're going to try to move them over to one or the other side of the bin so we could pull out the castings. I think 10 day intervals on this bin has been working well for us so we'll check back in when this bin, bin reaches day 130 and uh, see how we're progressing so uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did as always please remember to give me a thumbs up it's always really appreciated and uh, also consider becoming subscribed to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching.